four o'clock. Good afternoon. Helen Zaremus with ABC News. Three of the state's fires have been upgraded to the highest alert level. With warnings, the weather is worsening. Master Stefano reports from Rural Fire Service headquarters in Sydney. The Gateshead Fire south of Newcastle is the latest blaze to be elevated to the highest emergency alert level with calls for residents at Dudley and Redhead to evacuate. West of Newcastle, another new fire today at Minmai has also been upgraded with emergency warnings in place. It shut the major M1 road. The third blaze worrying authorities is the Springwood fire at the foot of the Blue Mountains. RFS Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons says ferocious wind gusts have caused embers to shower over the region. So conditions are going to be worse uh, across uh, much of the far weather area throughout the balance of this afternoon. Commissioner Fitzsimmons says those extreme weather conditions are also buffeting the Greater Sydney Basin. Mark Stefano, ABC News, Sydney. ABC reporter Lee Casman is flying over the fires at Min Mai and Gateshead. Firefighters are working under intense heat and high winds trying to bring two blazes in the Newcastle region under control. One is burning near Stockrington Road near Min Mai, which has prompted the closure of the local primary school. It's burning west of the M1 freeway. There's a second emergency warning near Gateshead, southwest of Newcastle. From the ABC Chocolate Weeks in Warrington. I'm pretty impressed that the swamp wall these have come to listen to the bushfire news. It's a bit of a fucking worry, really. If the bush telegraph is that good, then I'm guessing my son's having a bit of a rough time at the moment. Sarah Farnsworth is over the fire at Springwood. Flames are running just metres from home to Springwood near Falcon Bridge as six water bombers work to attack the fires from above. Large plumes of smoke are billowing across the township. Thank you, mate. Australian, South Australian strike teams are on standby near Mount Banks on the Bells line of road in case the fire jumps the road. Rebecca Barrett is there. An emergency response team of around 40 firefighters, national parks and ambulance crews have just been briefed by strike team leader Richard Brooks from South Australia. At the moment we're uh, waiting to see when the fire comes out. We're going to hopefully try and stop it at the roadside. If they can't stop the fire at the Bells line of road near Mount Banks, around 30 kilometres from Lithgow, they'll pull back to Mount Tomar. But for now, they're on standby until there's an update from the RFS helicopter. Rebecca Barrett, ABC News, near Mount Banks. Southern Highlands residents are being urged to remain vigilant this afternoon as strong winds are burning road. out of control. The whole road fire has burned well, roughly more than that's about where I think the sun is. And continues to threaten the villages of Yarrinville, Balmoral, Yandera, Wilton, Bargo, Buxton and Hilltop. More than 300 firefighters and 60 trucks are working together to battle the blaze. A fire burning near Ulladulla on the state south coast is still within containment lines, despite crews having little access to the fire ground today. The Wirreton Ridge fire has cut a swath of more than 4,000 hectares of remote bushland west of Ulladulla. Water bombing aircraft have had to be grounded because of high wind gusts. Oh. Our top story again. Three of the state's fires have been upgraded to the highest alert level. With warnings, the weather is worsening. Yeah, well, I know what it's like fighting a Section 44 fire. When they have to ground the air assets due to high wind and dust storms, we had that here in October. 2002 and as some people have said oh we're used to fires but not this intensity in October well that's kind of bullshit because 11 years ago we had fires this intense in October but they were up here in the northern end of New South Wales they weren't down in the Sydney Basin all right the intense October mega fires have moved 400 miles south that's by road. It's probably only about 250 miles actual straight line as the crow flies distance across the planet but yeah the intense fire seasons are moving further away from the equator into the temperate zone earlier on in the year. We've got another month and a half of spring to go yet before summer arrives. Joining us, Alex, good afternoon to you. 
Good afternoon. Uh, now, what is the latest on fires burning outside of those main trouble spots? At this stage, we do have quite a few fires burning around the state. However, the ones of major concern remain as the ones we've talked about for the last few days being the ones in the Blue Mountains and also two further fires which have started this afternoon, one in the Gateshead area at Lake Macquarie and the other at Stockrington um, Road up near Minmi, in, also in the Lake Macquarie area. In my yes. So the, now there's one, of course, up near Kempsey as well, a Dungay Creek fire that's still just at, at advice level? That's correct. Look, a number of our fires around the state are at advice level, and that normally means uh, that we have sufficient resources there and there's no immediate concern or risk to life or property. The fires, obviously, that we're paying most attention to are the ones under emergency warning and watch and act, as they are continue to burn this afternoon in difficult weather conditions. OK, any other fires down south or west that you're keeping a close eye on? At this stage, we're obviously remaining vigilant for any reports of new ignitions. That is just as much of a concern to us on days like this, um, as well as the fires which continue to burn. Obviously, we have a lot of resources tied up in the Blue Mountains area, so we're working uh, very hard at responding quickly and efficiently to any reports of fire in these difficult conditions. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. There we go. At uh, eight past four, let's cross to the Rural Fire Service at Homebush and uh, Rural Fire Service Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmon give, giving a press update. Of the uh, M1 motorway. Uh, at this stage, they're holding it on the M1 motorway. Uh, the road is closed uh, and there are traffic diversions in place. There's still a lot of work to do in that fire uh, before we bring it under control. The activity continues to uh, be pretty busy across the larger fire grounds, uh, but at this stage we're not reporting uh, any significant uh, breakouts. Uh, a lot of activity uh, in and around uh, the back of people's homes, uh, west of Bilpin, uh, in and around behind Barambing, uh, and across the, the back end of the uh, Darling Causeway, uh, Hartley Vale, uh, and um, uh, communities uh, near Clarence Dargan. Uh, firefighters are going to uh, flare-ups uh, and properties uh, that are under threat. We still have a few hours yet uh, of the strong winds uh, and the warmer conditions. Uh, the winds are expected to continue uh, right through to nightfall um, um, and beyond. Uh, we are expecting, as I said yesterday, and the forecast is continuing in this regard, uh, that there will be a swing around overnight uh, to a more southerly influence. Uh, it'll be a dry change, though. They're not expecting any moisture uh, in the change uh, this evening, uh, and we'll see a dry a uh, cooler day tomorrow, very dry though, uh, with fairly strong southwesterly winds, uh, 40 kilometres an hour, uh, gusting 60 to 80 kilometres an hour. So uh, whatever unfolds uh, throughout the afternoon today, uh, there will still be a lot of fire edge uh, that firefighters are going to have to continue to deal with uh, throughout tomorrow, uh, the coming days uh, and coming weeks. What impact are the uh, southwesterlies going to have on your firefighters? In a lot of the areas, uh, a southwesterly change, as it stands today, uh, would prove to be somewhat favourable uh, across a lot of the fire grounds. Uh, there'll be other areas where it will present some challenges. But given that the majority of these fire fronts are burning to the north uh, of populated areas, uh, such as the Bells line of road, uh, such as the Blackheath area, uh, uh, back in towards the Gross Valley and up the Darling Causeway, uh, and Springwood, uh, uh, Winmalee complex, which is to the northern side of the Great Western Highway. A southwesterly influence uh, will have the benefit of keeping it away from communities immediately adjacent to the south of those fire edge. Uh, that doesn't mean uh, that will make all these fire grounds trouble free. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it has the very real potential to present new challenges, uh, particularly in the northern end of the Winmalee Springwood fire, uh, where you could see, subject to fire behaviour uh, and strength of winds and other things, uh, that fire could pose threats tomorrow uh, to communities in the in the Yarramundi uh, uh, Valley area and to communities up through uh, Grossvale and what have you, uh, further to the northeast. Uh, so it will very much depend. Uh, on, the, on the extent of fire activity uh, that remains uh, uh, after the passage of, of weather this evening uh, and if we see a moderation in conditions, that's what we'll have to look at overnight and stay, take stock of uh, ahead of any uh, prevailing weather conditions tomorrow. Commissioner, you've had Epic Highway popped up there on the board um, with a call to close it around uh, Port Stephenson. 
past, sorry, yes, there is. We do have a, another outbreak of fire uh, up in that area. Uh, it is closer to the uh, Raymond Terrace area. It's really close to where we had the fire only, only uh, a few days ago. Uh, it's burning near Elizabeth Drive. Uh, it, it is going to impact on the uh, Pacific Highway in that location. It's only a small area of bush alight. Uh, there is a, there's a degree of confidence uh, that they'll be able to get the upper hand on that fire, uh, burning into uh, the burnt country. And at this stage, uh, apart from the, the, the roadways and the highway, uh, it's not posing any immediate threat to property. Uh, but I'll, I'll get more details on that when we go back. It could change. done everything conceivably possible uh, this week. Um, uh, we do need to keep uh, turning our mind back to uh, not dissimilar conditions uh, uh, only a week ago uh, where we saw you know, so much devastation and destruction uh, affecting lower Blue Mountains. Uh, we could not ignore the enormity of the fire fronts uh, that developed uh, northward of the townships of the Blue Mountains and Hawkesbury community. Uh, but as I've been saying all week, uh, I take my hat off uh, to the incident controllers, uh, to the men and women on the ground uh, that have taken some very calculated risks this week, uh, some high risk strategies, uh, some aggressive strategies. Uh, uh, they've considered all sorts of options. Uh, they knew, uh, they knew one thing. Uh, it simply wasn't an option to do nothing. Uh, they had to do uh, what they thought was the best thing to do uh, in order to shore up protection uh, and retard. Uh, uh, the, the, the likelihoods uh, and the advancement uh, of these fire fronts. Uh, it, was, it was great to see uh, the unexpected amount of moisture come across these fire grounds last night and that certainly Thank brought you for uh, hours that. of time this morning before we started to see a lot of these fire edges uh, flaring up uh, and taking hold as we're for the starting to see uh, throughout this the afternoon be a today. Total catastrophe. Uh, it, is, it is without a doubt in my mind uh, what we've seen unravel in the last week Apart from the extraordinary work of the men and women uh, of the firefighting community, but of the emergency management community, working shoulder to shoulder uh, with communities uh, in the direct path of these fires, uh, has yielded, uh, at this stage at least, and we still have a, a deal of time to go, uh, we've, we've yielded a very, very positive result uh, in what would otherwise have been, uh, you know, very dire situations. Do you think it could well be the sheer weight of numbers that you've got out there on the fire ground ready for breakouts that have actually stopped any major problems today? Well, look, I think that's probably a bit of a, a Murphy's Law thing. You know, if you, if you over-resource something uh, and it doesn't happen, that's a great thing. Uh, if we didn't resource uh, according to the risk uh, and the very real model uh, and likely potentials, uh, then you could be guaranteed uh, it would have gone horribly wrong. Uh, I'd much rather be uh, in the category of taking uh, a calculated, uh, realistic uh, uh, approach uh, to shoring up trying as many strategies as, as was conceivably possible, taking advantage of the 24-hour window of time uh, each and every day uh, leading into the bad weather today uh, that was expected uh, and hope that we sincerely pull off the best, uh, but making sure we plan the contingency uh, for what could really have been uh, an awful situation. We're not out of the woods yet. We still have hours to go. There are still fires uh, flaring up, running, impacting on communities this afternoon. There's every prospect we're going to see some more. There's every prospect we're going to see some fires breaking out uh, on the existing fire grounds that we've got across the Blue Mountains. Uh, I won't rest easy uh, until I know uh, things have settled uh, right down uh, over the next 24 hours or so uh, and we start seeing some really good further consolidation uh, of control lines and bringing these fires uh, uh, more under control. Hey, when does that suddenly expect it? Have you got a time that you can say, OK, we've got better conditions on? The real challenge with the weather this afternoon is that the warm conditions, the dry conditions, the windy conditions dominating out of the west northwest are going to remain uh, well and truly till after dark. Uh, the strengths in wind and the temperatures will, will adjust uh, in, in association with nightfall. Uh, there's not going to be any dramatic front moving through uh, like we saw um, uh, in the last week or so, but there will be a turning uh, more to a southerly influence, uh, a southwesterly influence, with the winds that will start setting in overnight uh, and strengthening up right throughout tomorrow. So there's not going to be a lot of reprieve uh, in wind strength tonight, or certainly better than be what we're experiencing now. But as we set into tomorrow, 40, 50 kilometres an hour 
gusting, you know, uh, 60, 70, 80 kilometres an hour uh, is very likely throughout the day tomorrow and very, very dry. The humidities are expected to be down around 10% or that the, the temperatures will moderate down into the 20s. Shane, people on the ground like, like New Bargo and Beltline of Road um, are worried that it's going to jump the containment lines. Do you know anything if we're going to give an update? Oh, look, at this stage, as I indicated earlier, whether it's the whether it's the Bargo fire ground down on the Southern Highlands or indeed the Bells Line of Road uh, fire ground area uh, north of the Blue Mountains, uh, I've said for days uh, the containment on these things, despite the extraordinary efforts uh, and success, uh, was tenuous at best. Those containment lines are being tested right now. Uh, there are firefighters actively working, uh, defending properties in the Brambing area, uh, and communities west of Bilpin. That's the reports that I'm receiving. Uh, they're, they're putting in lots of bulk water supplies. Uh, there's helicopters throwing everything they've got at new flare-ups uh, and breakouts. Uh, there's a very aggressive firefighting operation going on uh, right across different fire grounds now. At this stage, we don't have reports, however, of any major outbreak of fire uh, posing any additional risk to what we already know we're dealing with, and that's a good thing. Uh, it, it's a really good thing, uh, given the time of day we're at, uh, but we've still got a few hours to go yet. What about those residents who left the Blue Mountains? Endless have been more prevalent today. You're looking at 90 kilometre an hour winds or 1,600 kilometres of, of, of fire frontage. It's a thousand miles of fire front. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not. Um, um, and, the cha and, and the main reason for that is it's taken a while uh, for the weather conditions uh, to set in today, uh, to agitate the fire behaviour, to get the fires burning. Uh, ember attack is typically uh, uh, linked with a well-advanced, uh, a, 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 an aggressively burning fire that's starting to take hold uh, and generate uh, its own energy. Once you see that, you typically see uh, ember showers uh, well ahead of the main fire front. What we've been able to see this morning uh, with, with uh, very direct and deliberate uh, water bombing attacks, when we see uh, fire starting to flare... Yeah, well, I would say the thunderstorms night, had more to do with it than the water bombing as attacks. As we um, we, we're seeing fires up through the Hunter that we simply can't control at the moment, but they're not posing any risk to anybody. Because the Hunter uh, didn't get rained on. Uh, that might be seeing uh, ember showers as we speak, but the fires in close to the communities that we've had our focus on, uh, we're not seeing we're not seeing the ember attack coming out of those fire lines. The fire burning up through uh, Redhead, See, for example. See, that's what having a bloody uh, rainstorm burning, does. Uh, west of the of the um, one millimetre, uh, ten tons uh, per those hectare. Fires are burning uh, and producing embers uh, and, and putting one uh, ton costs uh, one hundred and fifty dollars to throw out an aeroplane, four hundred and fifty dollars to throw out of a helicopter. Are likely once fires start taking they had about three or four millimetres last night. Right across the fire ground. Into the suburbs where my mother and cousin are, across the top of my son. For a while, uh, let's wait for for a passage of time. Uh, we will give the all clear. Uh, in terms Guess of the rain dancers home. aren't so uh, much firstly, bullshit after all, are they? Well hey? uh, thank you for taking the initiative. Uh, thank you for making a decision. If you felt uncomfortable, if you felt you weren't prepared, uh, if you felt uh, you would not be uh, wanting to be in harm's way. I'm really way, impressed that the boss male swamp wallaby has come up to, to listen to an 18-minute sitting in friends or radio homes or news bulletin about the bushfires my son has fought. Uh, to sit out the day. That's a great thing. It makes uh, anybody who thinks I'm joking when uh, I say that swamp wallabies are my psychiatrists makes them look like fucking uh, idiots, doesn't right it? Thing to do heading back up the mountains. Uh, anyway, I don't think Shane Fitzsimmons, the New South Wales RFS go, Commissioner, is uh, going to say too much more. Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons there we go. Uh, speaking live from the Rural Fire Service headquarters at Homebush. Thank you for coming and listening to that with me, Eric. That was very, very nice. And for those who really like the coincidence, Eric was my father's name. I bestowed it on this swamp wallaby because this is the only macropod I know who will eat a couple of slices of bread and then turn his nose up and go away because he doesn't like eating too much. Anyway, warbles on a lot to YouTube. The swamp wallaby that listened to the bushfire bulletin. Ciao.